This is Aiden Scott, EMS Program Manager, EMS University, San Antonio. We're now going to go over Section 5-4, Injuries to the Head and Spine. First, as always, you have to do your assessment. If you think there's a possibility of a spinal injury, treat as if there is a spinal injury. It's always better to err on the side of caution. Immediately take steps to manually control C-spine. Maintain manual C-spine control until patient is immobilized on a long spine board. Um, keep in mind, a C-collar alone is not adequate. Uh, if you just put a C-collar on a patient but don't put them on a long spine board, uh, you have the potential for causing even more injury um, than what they would have sustained without a C-collar, period. So unless you're going to put the patient on a long spine board, do not C-collar the patient. Um, you you want to... If the patient's able to walk, move extremities, um, they do have foot sensation or um, don't have any pain uh, to the spinal column, it doesn't mean that there isn't a spinal column or spinal cord injury. Um, the adrenaline um, is pumping so hard that it, it, it'll mask any, uh, any injuries, period. So just because they're up walking around, they can move their extremities, feel their extremities, doesn't mean that there's not any damage done. Pay very careful attention to the patient's breathing. Um, correct immediately as needed while maintaining C-spine control. Um, instead of using the head tilt chin lift though, you use the jaw thrust maneuver um, and you'll be prepared to uh, provide positive pressure ventilation. Here you see uh, the jaw thrust. Note the fingers behind the jaw, um, right at the curve of the mandible there, um, and it just pushes the jaw up uh, without manipulating the spine, uh, without manipulating C-spine at all. This will pull the tongue off the back of the airway as well, so um, it, it not only aligns but uh, pulls that uh, your biggest uh, airway block out of the way. Signs and symptoms, um, tenderness of the spine in the area of the injury, uh, any deformity of the spine, uh, soft tissue injuries associated with spinal injury, uh, you know, the muscle, discs, uh, tendons, ligaments, all of that. Loss of sensation or paralysis below the level of suspected spinal injury. Uh, and here you see in the uh, um, figure here, uh, the quadriplegia versus paraplegia. Uh, quadriplegia is quad, all four extremities. Um, this occurs at the C5, C6 um, area if there's uh, damage to the spinal cord in the C5, C6 region. Um, and then at your uh, L1 uh, will paralyze from the waist down and that's where you get the paraplegia. Um, loss of sensation or abnormal sensation um, to the area. In your male patients, look for a priapism, um, an erection that will not go down um, longer than uh, five, ten minutes. You should suspect a priapism, and, um, which is a medical emergency. Um, and it, it's one of the biggest indicators of a spinal injury in your male uh, patients. Evidence of bladder or bowel incontinence is another major sign uh, that you're dealing with a spinal cord injury. Impaired breathing, pain along the spinal column, or uh, in the buttocks or legs as well. Immobilization, you have your spinal immobilization devices. Um, the indications for those are uh, for use with any suspected spinal injury based on history, mechanism of injury, and signs and symptoms. Uh, you'll use these in the conjunction with long and short backboards. Um, the precautions, again, C-spine collars alone do not provide adequate immobilization. They could actually do more harm if you just use a C-collar. Uh, manual immobilization must be maintained until the patient is secured to the board. Even if there is a collar on, you must continue to hold manual stabilization. You have your... Uh, Manual inline stabilization, um, pad the voids, Your the, the natural uh, kyphoses and lordoses in the back, um, there will be gaps between your uh, patient's back and the board. Uh, 
stick a towel under there, stick a pillow, something, anything. Uh, pad that void, otherwise you're going to cause more discomfort and could potentially cause more injury. Uh, your C colors, an improperly sized collar will do more harm than good. Uh, your short spinal immobilization devices, uh, those are used for your vehicular extrications um, and complicated scenarios. Um, can also be used for PDs as well. Um, however, you always want to secure to a longboard after. Um, and then you've got your full body spinal mobilization devices, which are your uh, long spine boards. Some notes for the immobilization. Remember, kids are shaped like Charlie Brown. Pad the shoulders to keep the neutral position. Um, they've got big head, little body. So pad up under the shoulders to get their airway to rest in the neutral position um, or the sniffing position. For your football players, keep the helmet in place and remove face guard. They All it takes is a screwdriver to remove the face guard. Do not remove the helmet, though. Um, their shoulders are already padded. Leave them that way. Um, if their helmet is removed while their pads are still on, uh, of course, place a pillow under their head um, to help uh, maintain that C-spine. Child safety seats may be used to secure infants, but the child must be removed first so its back can be cleared. A rolled towel can be used to pat its head in the seat. Um, you just roll it up and then um, uh, wrap it around the top of the head. Um, outline the top of the head with a, with a towel or... Um, sheet or whatever you use. Alright, biggest thing, do not forget to check PMS, pulse motor sensory, before you immobilize and after you immobilize. Um, if you have any loss of PMS after immobilization, there is something very wrong. So be sure you double check and double check your PMS before and after spinal immobilization. Advise responsive patients to keep arms crossed uh, across their chest or abdomen. Um, be sure you reassess um, the uh, pulse motor sensory. Notice the green line is pointing to the X, um, the tape that's got the head taped to the spine board. Um, you want that cross because it just adds uh, extra tension to it um, and provides more st stability. This is a nice spiderweb pattern on a windshield. Uh, suspected uh, this is probably a pretty rough car accident without seeing the rest of the car. 70% of all motor vehicle accidents result in a head injury. You have your scalp and facial injuries. This is very vascular. They do tend to bleed more than expected. Um, uh, once you put use the proper bandaging techniques or um, hold pressure, uh, they also do clot pretty quickly. But they do bleed quite a bit. Um, no cause for alarm, though. Um, it usually takes a while to bleed from a scalp or facial injury unless it's a uh, pretty severe avulsion. Um, all injuries to facial structures can produce partial or complete obstruction of the airway, so be careful um, be aware um, you know if they've got a broken jaw yeah you're gonna have an issue uh, maintaining airway uh, because the jaws in pieces it's just gonna kind of flop around there uh, which adds more weight to the tongue which could even further occlude the airway your skull injuries fracture of the bones with possible injuries of the brain Keep an eye out for bruising around the eyes, or raccoon eyes, uh, bruising behind the ears over the mastoid process. These are called battle signs. Th this is called the battle sign. Um, you want to keep an eye, for any f eye out for any fluid or uh, blood coming from eyes, nose, or ears. Um, usually contains uh, cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. Um, if you have head trauma with unequal pupils chances are you have a brain injury very big problem in trauma assessment CSF is the best indicator that the meningeal layers have been penetrated um, this means that those protective coverings for your brain uh, are torn are 
ruptured in some way um, so that the fluid that protects your brain is now leaking out. This is a very, very, very serious problem. Here we see a uh, battle sign. This uh, is the bruising behind the ear um, along the mastoid process. The mastoid process would run right about here. Um, you see the bruising. This is indicative of a uh, head injury. And you see some discoloration to the eyelid as well. Um, I'd venture to bet that there's, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of yellow discoloration, green discoloration around the under eyes as well as the other eye. Here are your raccoon eyes. The dark coloration around the eyeballs. This is a, v um, this along with the battle sign, um, you know good and well you've got a, a head injury you're dealing with. So um, always keep your eyes open for stuff like this. Brain injury, the severity can vary widely. Um, lacerations or contusions, um, hematomas, uh, really you just uh, it, it all depends every patient is going to be different um, open head injury is a very big problem um, y you'll um, just like an open fracture um, bone protruding or you see obvious fracture of the bone um, or you see actual gray matter um, we've got a very big problem you need to get to the trauma center pretty quick Signs and symptoms of a head injury, of course, altered mental status. This ranges from a brief um, loss of consciousness to confusion to complete unresponsiveness. Use your Glasgow Coma Scale. Um, this is where it really, really counts. Um, any of the signs suggestive of a skull injury. Nausea and or projectile vomiting. We're talking sit up, hit the wall on the other side of the room, projectile vomiting. Uh, and it will be that forceful. Um, loss of neurological function, um, you know, fine motor sensories, uh, fine motor is the first thing to go, um, but they'll be more, become more and more clumsy, um, less and less agile. Seizures, um, these tend to occur with um, swelling in the brain or bleeding in the brain, any kind of pressure on the brain uh, will usually um, initiate seizures. Um, However, with a head injury, they generally tend to not stop. Um, they may have, you know, stop and have three to four minutes of postictal state, and then they'll start seizing again. You have to be on top of this. Um, be ready with oxygen and uh, uh, your positive pressure ventilations uh, as soon as the seizure stops. Um, also, you need to have a, uh, an ALS unit um, either ready to intercept or um, on board. And then of course you've got your unequal pupils are uh, the one of the biggest signs of a uh, head injury. However, it's also one of the um, later signs. So um, you already know you're in trouble if, if their pupils are unequal. Considerations. Uh, when a child places something in their ear or nose, do not attempt to remove the object. Instead, transport the patient to the hospital and let them remove it. Um, pediatricians are specially trained in object retrieval. Um, let the professionals do it. Um, you, you don't want to cause any further tr uh, trauma. As you can see, the eardrum, uh, ear canal, if you traumatize that, they could lose their hearing. Um, if you go, f you know, fishing up the nose, you could cause damage to sinuses, eyeballs, brain. It, it just, it, it's best just to let the, the professionals do it. Helmet removal. Uh, many different patient populations are likely to wear helmets. Um, it just, it really depends. Everybody's different. Uh, the types of helmets vary greatly. Uh, you've got the full face, you've got the um, partial face, uh, you've got the um, skull caps, it, it just, you've got a, um, it, there are so many different types of helmets to deal with, we'd be here all day if we listed them all. The indications for leaving the helmet in place, um, they, it doesn't interfere with assessment and monitoring of airway and breathing. 
There are no current or impending airway or breathing problems. Uh, the patient can adequately be uh, immobilized with the helmet in place, and their head rests snugly in the helmet, uh, ensuring there's no movement of the head after the helmet is secured to the long spine fluid. If their head, however, is just kind of bouncing all over the helmet, it's going to do more harm than good. Go ahead, take it off, C-spine them, carefully remove the helmet, and uh, C-spine your patient. General rules for helmet removal. Uh, again, it depends on the size, design, all of that. It, it, it depends on the helmet. Uh, however, ensure that C-spine control is maintained throughout the entire process. This concludes the spinal injury and head injury section. If you have any questions, please uh, direct them to the instructor of record. Thank you.